Warning, the following video contains images of the dissection of a chicken embryo with the purpose of instructing biotechnology students on how to create primary culture. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome to the lab. I'm Drew Collip. In today's lab, we're going to continue on our video series where we're making our own cell lines or primary culture. We're making them from chicken embryos because they're readily available. Here you can see a number of fertilized eggs we have in our 37 degree incubator. It takes three weeks from fertilization to eggs hatching with a live chicken. We'll be using these eggs at about two weeks time. We want the embryos to be large enough that we can obtain organs, but not so large that they have feathers. The eggs are placed in these trays and this gently rocks the egg back and forth. I was hoping to capture the motion in this video, however, the rocker moves very slowly. We'll be taking an egg here, spraying it down with 70% ethanol to sterilize it on the outside, and it will already be sterile on the inside. When we're making cell lines, we want to ensure that sterility is key. Once the cells are out of the body or the egg, there's nothing to stop any infection of bacteria or viruses. We will crack the egg open. We will invert the egg to dump the embryo out. We'll clean the egg with a solution called PBS, phosphate buffered saline. We will then terminate the embryo by cutting through its neck to decapitate it. This is done humanely and as quickly as possible. The knowledge our students gain outweighs the ethical issues involved in this. Please note that these chickens were taken from a chicken farm. These chickens were going to be terminated eventually for food. Some of the students from this program will go on to work in cancer research. With the techniques they learn in this lab, they can create cell lines from biopsies taken from real people. From the knowledge we gain from these biopsies, we can either treat that individual with personalized medicine, or we can get a better understanding of cancer so that we can have better outcomes for cancer patients into the future. Here I have a setup outside a laminar flow hood. If I was actually trying to make cell lines, I would have this occurring in a sterilized biosafety cabinet or laminar flow hood. I have two eggs here. One is fertilized, one is not. Start the lab by turning on your bead sterilizer or the Steri. Glass beads inside this device will heat up to 250 degrees Celsius. To set it, we press the set button, it will beep. You should see the light blinking to indicate it is running. If it is not set to 250, we can rotate the set button until it reads 250 degrees Celsius. We press it again and it will start up. We're going to be using a pair of scissors to crack the egg open, two pairs of curved forceps, and a scalpel, disposable blade, in the handle. Note this is the sharp side. Don't poke yourself. In a previous video named step one, I've gone through the setup of a lot of this already. If you haven't done so yet, please do watch that video and then come back and watch this one. Try not to knock over your eggs. We have two sponges for washing our equipment. They're just the standard kitchen sponge. I've cut them into quarters. One will have wet by putting a little bit of our sterilized PBS on top. And the other one will be dry. Whenever working with these instruments, before we place them in the steri, they must be clean and they must be dry. You can see we have a wet sponge and the one beside it would be the dry sponge. Here we have large petri dishes, standard size, and we have smaller ones. We'll be transferring our individual organs into these smaller dishes, but the whole embryo will go into the larger dish. Again, please note the size difference. You can see the stair is only at 45 degrees presently. It takes some time to heat up, so start with that. To hold our eggs, we'll be using a 50 mil beaker.
We place it in to the beaker, pointed side down. Chicken eggs actually have a rounded side and a pointed side. Here we have an egg candler. It's just a high intensity LED flashlight. And we'll use this to determine if the egg is fertilized or not. If you look here, one side is pointed and the other side is more rounded. The side that's rounded should have an air pocket on it. So we place that directly onto the egg candler and turn it on. And without the lights on, you can see there's an air pocket there. Let's turn the lights off to get a better look. Please don't flash this in your eyes or anybody else's eyes. It can damage their eyes. Again, we place it on the rounded part of the egg, turn it on, and you can see this is an unfertilized egg, the kind you have in your kitchen. We can still see an air pocket there, but the egg itself lights up like a light bulb. There is no embryo in this egg, so this is not one you would choose for this experiment. Some of the eggs we have in the incubator will not be fertilized. Here we have our fertilized egg, and hopefully you can see a large difference. Again, we have the air pocket, but we can see the shadow of the embryo inside the egg. And if you rotate it around, you can see the embryo moving around in the egg. Now it's not moving on its own, just fluid dynamics. Now make sure we place the rounded part, the part with the air pocket pointed upwards and make sure you have a fertilized egg. You would do this in the main lab, bring it to your biosafety cabinet that is sterilized. You would spray this down with ethanol and then place it into your biosafety cabinet. At this point, we need to wait for a while for our stairway to reach 250 degrees Celsius. When placing items in, remember, they must be clean and dry. And please, 10 seconds only. We don't want the metal tool to heat up and burn you as you pick it up. So please keep your items in this Petri dish pointed away from you when you're not using them and then sterilize them just when you need them. We can take the lid off and leave it off for the duration of the lab and we're going to sterilize just the handle of the scissors. Make sure it's nice and clean, washing off anything that might be on the outside and then we dry it with the second sponge. If there's any water on the instrument when you place it in the stereo, it can get between the beads, it can boil, and it can cause the beads to shoot out of the stereo itself. You really don't want 250 degrees Celsius beads flying out at you. We place it in, handle side only, count to 10, then remove it. We're going to use this as a hammer to break the shell. You have to hit it hard, don't be shy. Remember the air pocket there will be an area where we can hit and the shell can dent without leaking out. We're going to hit this so we have an opening about the size of a toonie. That is a Canadian $2 coin. It has the diameter of about an inch or two and a half centimeters. As we crack the eggshell, you'll notice there's a membrane underneath. Once we've sufficiently cracked open the egg, we want to peel the shell off, and then we want to peel off the membrane underneath, the chorionic membrane. To do this, we're going to use a set of curved forceps. Once again, make sure they're clean, and make sure they're dry. When working with a chicken embryo, if you have chicken tissue on the instruments when you place them into the stereo, uh, after a few minutes it'll start smelling like uh, barbecue. You're literally cooking chicken. So make sure you clean all your instruments, dry them, and then place them into the stereo for only 10 seconds. Place them inside and count to 10. Notice I have a Petri dish here. So as not to make a large mess, I'm going to use this to place the shells in. Wait a few seconds for it to cool. And then we're going to peel the shell off using our curved forceps. 
I appear to have torn some of the membrane here. Not a big deal. But you can see that air pocket. In a previous video, we actually looked at an ostrich egg and we saw that even that egg had that similar air pocket. You want to make sure that the opening is large enough and there's no parts that are sticking out. We're going to invert the egg and let gravity pull the embryo out of the egg. If the opening is not large enough, the embryo will get stuck and it will make quite a mess. So please ensure the opening is large enough. Imagine how large the air pocket is and peel the shell off until the shell is down to where the air pocket reaches the egg. There is a live chicken embryo in there. Now I'm going to peel the chorionic membrane, grab it with two sets of forceps and pull. This is very biological. If you are not interested in this, I advise you uh, turn off the video now and go watch something else. You can see the embryos inside, there is the yolk. The yolk is actually what the embryo uses as a food source while it is gestating for the three week period of time. We've opened the eggshell, we've removed the membrane. Take the, your waist and you're gonna drop it into a biohazard bag. It should be taped to the side of your hood. Notice there's a large part of the Petri dish and a smaller part. We're gonna dump it into the larger part. If you dump it into the smaller part, it'll make a large mess. Here we go. As you invert the egg, do it quickly. If not, it'll drizzle out on the side and make a large mess. There is their chicken embryo. We're gonna raise it up higher. Let gravity help us. You can look inside. We can see this vasculature in there. And here's our live chicken embryo. There's actually a clear membrane surrounding it that we have to remove. You can see there is blood and you can see the yolk that the embryo is using as its food source. Once again, everything that comes in contact with that embryo should be sterilized. One thing I should have done here was put the lid back on the Petri dish. Always try and keep your tissues covered at all times. Here I'm cleaning my curved forceps again, and then drying them, and then placing them into the stereo for 10 seconds. Let them cool for a few seconds. We do not want to burn any of the tissue as we're trying to keep the cells alive outside the body of this chicken. So grab onto the clear membrane. You can see it here. Grab it with both forceps and tear it open. When you do that, you can see the embryo will come out. Now you have a better look at what the chicken embryo looks like. This is two weeks past fertilization. Lots of biology in that dish, so let's grab it by the neck, gently, and transfer it to a new dish. You must pull that off with your other pair. Don't worry, if you create a bit of a mess, we can clean that up. And then cover up the dish with all the blood and yolk and just drop that whole thing in your biohazard bag. Here's our chicken embryo. Let's give it a wash with some sterilized PBS. Just a little bit. You're gonna wash it many times with PBS, trying to get off as much of the blood and yolk and whatnot so we have a clean embryo. This embryo is presently alive. Give it a rinse. You can actually see this embryo is slightly older than we expected. I did this after the students used the other embryos. So you can see feathers on it. Give it a rinse, grab it gently by the neck and transfer it to a new dish. And then once again, cover up the other dish and drop the entire contents into biohazard. Give it another wash with PBS. Again, this is a sterilized solution. So we wanna make sure sterility is key here. Once again, washing and drying 
our instruments. We're going to spend a lot of time in this lab ensuring sterility We will transfer this one more time. The embryo looks pretty clean. I don't see a lot of blood or yolk coming off of it, so I believe the embryo is clean now. We will now be terminating the embryo because we will be dissecting its organs. To do this, we'll use a scalpel blade and cut through its neck. Before we do that, you can take a closer look at the chicken. You can see his eye, his beak, his, his neck. That is a live organism. Once again, we're going to gain a lot of knowledge from the sacrifice of this little being. We must respect them, and to respect them, we're going to make sure we remove its head quickly and humanely. Wash the scalpel blade by wiping so you're not going to cut yourself. That blade is extremely sharp. It's a brand new scalpel blade. You're going to use the curved forceps to hold its neck. And using the scalpel blade, you're going to do one motion through its neck. I want this to be done firmly and quickly. You should be cutting into the plastic with that much force. Now would be the time to turn off the video if you do not want to watch this. We sterilize our instruments. We let them cool for a moment. Grab it by the neck and then slice through the neck with the scalpel. Done. One swipe, no problem. Make sure you do this cleanly. That's all for today. The next video will show the dissection. Until next time.